Good afternoon, guys and gals. Today is Monday, June the 20th, 2022. I recently posted a video talking about the cowl on my 67 Nova and some things that I had learned about blocking off the vents in the cowl. And to my surprise, that video has gotten a ton of views very quickly and a lot of comments, a lot of folks telling me that they are learning from what I am posting. And that kind of stuff really, really, you know, makes me feel better about making these videos videos here in the shop because I'm just glad to hear that other people are learning from my mistakes. God knows there has been a lot of them. So in this video, I decided that I would share with you guys the process of creating the very last section that I'm about to do here in the cow. You can see that I have one more section to go. I've also got the piece of metal that goes around where the wiper uh, post extends out right there. And I'm going to share with you guys that entire process. I have now done three of these. I did one right here here and here and I want to preface this video by saying again as I've said in the past learn with me not from me I am not a professional I don't claim to be a professional I am an amateur fabricator on these cars I've never done this before but as I do this I'm certainly learning I figured out some things to do and not to do and I'm going to try and show you that and basically show you the entire process there of patching this last section in the cow I want to go ahead and start start by saying that our starting point right here, if you'll notice, I have got my laser set up right there. The reason I have done that is because I am able to draw a line going from my, uh, my wiper post right here down to the front of the cowl. I can then put a mark on the cowl. I'll do the same thing going in the other direction. And that is later going to be important because, as you can see right here, I have this little piece that I have already cut out of the cowl. Uh, this is the piece that goes around the wiper post that goes just like you see right there. So it's important that I'm able to, to relocate in the future where that thing goes so that as I create this entire panel that's going to go right here, I'm ultimately able to drill the hole so that that thing can stick through and I know where to drill it because I've marked it on the cow you can see the little laser line right there and I've marked it with a little bit of uh, red uh, grease marker and at the end of the day I'm going to be able to relocate this thing back where it goes now it's worth mentioning that part of the reason I have cut this out is because this one didn't fit worth a darn if we have a look at this one right over here you can kind of see that this one fits pretty nicely around the cow this one did not. The little wiper post was rubbing against it, so I'm having to relocate this thing in the car. That's kind of the unfortunate truth of using these aftermarket body panels. You're going to have to do some cutting and welding and uh, some serious massaging in order to make things fit exactly as they need to. So this is our starting point. I've cut this piece out. I have marked where it goes. I'm going to pull that out of the car, and I'm going to show you my process on how I am going to wall that off just like I've done on those other three panels. Come learn with me. Let's go check it out. Just a quick FYI before we start. This is a Sharpie and a grease marker. Never ever use a Sharpie to start drawing on the outside of the car. These things will bleed through your paint later. The grease marker, you can easily clean that off with some wax and grease remover. Don't make the mistake of using a Sharpie on the outside of your car. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and create my blank. I just took a piece of 18 gauge, laid it down on the cowl, and made a couple of marks so I knew roughly how big my blank needed to be. And then from there, I I cut it out in my uh, shear. From that point, I've got my blank made. And here comes the part where we learn why I cut this piece out of the cowl. If I had that piece still in the car right here, this would not be a nice flat piece. And so when I tried to lay this down over it, it wouldn't be able to just sit down flat. And so not only did, th did this have to be relocated anyway, now that I've got it out of the way, I can now curve this piece to get the profile that I want, and then we'll worry about this later. So at this point, I'm ready to start adding the curvature of my flat blank right here. The best way that I have found to do this, and I have tried several different ways, is to ultimately use a rubber mallet and curve this thing around a welding cylinder. This thing is very, very strong and rigid, uh, so that's really all there is to it. It's just a bunch of careful hammering. 
It's worth mentioning that I really wish that I had an empty welding cylinder because this one is completely full and if I ever managed to rupture this thing, they would never find my body. So anyways, this is all there is to it. All right, so you can see there that I'm starting to get the curvature that I want. I'm not gonna show you this entire process because it's probably an hour of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, hammering this thing until you finally get the profile that you want. We'll just skip ahead to it. Okay, so at this point, I've got my, my patch piece here and I've got it curved to where it fits the cowl profile very, very nicely on both ends. So at this point, I can lay it here nice and flat on the cowl and it sits where it's supposed to because that post riser area is not in place. There are two big lessons that I learned in doing this that I wanna share with you at this point in the game. Number one, when you go to curve that piece, be absolutely sure that the profile of it matches the car and you don't find yourself trying to tweak it or push it or pull it in order to make it match. I say that because I learned that if you do, when you weld it into the car, it is only going to get worse. The welds will cause everything to, uh, to get worse. I mean, how else can you say it? Uh, and not just that, I also recommend being absolutely sure that you don't use whatever sheet metal you've already got in your shop. Get the exact same thickness of sheet metal as is being used on your original or aftermarket panel. I did not do that. I chose to use 18 gauge and I learned the hard way that if you don't curve that panel absolutely perfect and then you run off and you weld it into the cowl or whatever body panel it may be, what you'll find is that the thin metal will actually conform to the thicker metal. Go figure, right? The thicker metal is stronger. And so in this case, what I ended up when I made this weld right here was I had a raised seam across here where it was too high. And there I was trying to hammer and dolly this edge down to where it was nice and smooth and you know was a good contour. And this was ultimately caused by the fact that I was both not making sure that my piece was absolutely curved perfectly as well as the fact that my patch panel was made of metal that was too thick and it was causing the thinner stuff to do what it wanted it to do. So those are my two pieces of advice at this point. All right, so I went ahead and uh, hammered on this thing just a little more, getting that contour as good as I can get it. And at the end of the day, I now have a contour that I'm happy with it down here, you know, on that end. And then down here on this end as well, if I were to lay it down flat, I'm happy with that as well. It's worth mentioning that the stock panel here does not just curve in this direction. It also curves in this direction. I don't have a deep throat shrinker stretcher, so I don't really have any ability to come in here and start stretching all of this and then make it curve that away as well. If you guys want to see a YouTube channel of just world-class fabricating and learn from a true professional, go check out Carl at Make It Custom. Uh, he's a Canadian, eh? He's got a YouTube channel. Really, really good stuff there. Check him out. Uh, so anyways, now that I am at this point, what I am going to do is lay this thing on the cowl, push it down to where it's nice and flat on each end, tack it in place so it is held firmly in place with four tack welds. Four. Okay, so at this point, you can see that I've tack welded my patch panel in place. I did choose to use a C-clamp to give me a little extra pressure where I thought it was necessary. And at this point, you'll notice that it, 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 you know, it extends over all of the edges more than is necessary. That is by design. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my cutoff wheel with a 1 16th thin blade. You know, a 1 32nd might even work better, but I'm using a 1 16th, so I'm going to cut through both of those pieces and ultimately create a top blank that can slide right down inside of that hole, leaving a 1 16th gap all the way around for me to fill in that 1 16th inch gap with welding wire.
Okay, so at this point, I have cut out the original piece out of the car that you just saw, and I have now created the exact same size blank to go in its place. Two things that I want to mention about what you just saw there. Pay attention to the fact that I was cooling the material as I was cutting it with that cutoff wheel. You can easily put so much heat into a piece of metal with just a cutoff wheel that you warp it the same as you do with welding. So definitely stop periodically and cool your metal as needed. Also, I want to point out, you'll notice that I'm wearing welding gloves, a welding jacket, glasses, and a face shield. The reason that I'm doing that is I no longer trust running these cutoff wheels without lots of gear on. About a year ago, I had one of those wheels come apart on me while I was using it. A portion of it went into my left hand, cut me very deep, and I got a terrible infection in my left hand. It swelled up the size of Christmas. The last thing that I want to t uh, share with you is you'll notice here that I still have my four welds that now need to be removed and then this last little bit of the blank that is left around the outer edge. As I go to remove those tiny little welds, I will use maybe a sanding disc like that or again, I might very well use a cutoff wheel, but what I will not use for that is a flap wheel. What I've come to find about flap wheels is they will ground your weld down, but the problem is, is they'll push down on the weld and they'll also land on both sides of the weld at the same time. So when you finally get your weld completely ground away, you have two divots in the metal to the left and to the right where your little flap wheel kind of conform to everything. Uh, a sanding disc, you know, like that right there that has no flap to it is a much better tool to use. Don't use a flap wheel. All right, so the next step is that you've got to remove all of the rough edges off of your new patch as well as your workpiece. You can see in these shots that I'm removing all of those ground hard areas where extra material was sticking up. This is actually quite important. Some people might look at that and go, ah, what does it matter? You're just fixing to weld all of that anyways. It's going to be a great big weld mess. Why bother? Well, here's why you should bother. Uh, next, I'm going to be using these little clamps that you see here, little sheet metal butt clamps. You can see in these shots that I'm adding them all the way around the workpiece, and they have a little piece that goes on the back side, and basically it just clamps everything together so it's very, very nice and flush and in the same plane. If you were to leave all of those rough edges on your workpiece and on your, your, uh, you know, your patch, you would find things would not line up like they're supposed to because this is not trying to clamp on two perfectly, you know, pieces, uh, pieces of metal that are the exact same thickness with no rough edges. So remove those rough, rough edges, get yourself a, a dozen or two of these little things. Like you get them at Harbor Freight really cheap and they are really, really handy. Good morning, everybody. It is day two of my cowl work. Uh, you'll notice that I have removed all of my clamps across the top. That's basically where I'm just checking things over one last time before I burn in the new panel right here and make sure that all of my body lines are correct. You know, that this seam right here did not expand out that away. I noticed that the joint right here was a little bit bigger than I, I, I wanted it to be, a little wider than the, uh, than the width of my grinding cutoff wheel that I used. And so that kind of made me a little concerned that maybe this edge had kind of pulled out this away a little bit. So I pulled my clamps out. I'm just checking everything one last time. I think uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to weld it across the back side, across here, remove all of these clamps, go ahead and bore my hole for my wiper post to, co to come through, and then I'm going to put it in the car, make sure that this, uh, you know, this line right here where the windshield goes still fits everything up against the car like it's supposed to, and if it does, then I'll come back over, reinstall my clamps, uh, and then, you know, put my tack welds in from the back side. So, that's what we're doing. Time to test fit.
Okay, so at this point, I've got the panel test fit into the car. I went ahead and I put in a self-tapping screw right here that pulled this seam downward into the car. So now I know that this section of the cowl perfectly matches the actual car. I'm not going to run off and weld this up and then find that it, you know, it hangs over too far. So that self-tapping screw will really help me ensure that this thing has a nice fit to it. Uh, later when I come in, you know, when I proceed to burn this entire panel onto the actual car, of course I will fill in those holes uh, with welds where I put these self-tappers in place. So now what I'm going to do is just put one tack weld right here in the middle, and all that's really going to do is just hold the separation between these two pieces the, the correct distance apart so that then I can pull this panel back out of the car put all of my clamps in place to fig to make sure that everything you know aligns in this direction so that nothing is you know offset or uh, you know too high or low or whatnot and then I'll, I'll put a few tack welds in from the back side just as I did before Okay, so you can't see it, but at this point, I've got my plug weld tool on the back side of this metal. That allows me to be able to fill in this gap, this long hole here, without just a great big weld falling through the opposite side. I'm going to go ahead and turn my 210 amp welder up to setting 2 out of 6, and then I'm going to start doing one little tack weld at a time, going about an eighth of an inch per weld and cooling in between every single weld. Alright folks, here is the back side of the cowl with all four patch panels in place. I'm measuring about 83 and a half inches of actual welds and roughly eight welds per inch. I think I've done about 668 welds on this thing. Okay guys, this is what the top side of the cowl looks like. You can see that all of my little welds have not yet been dressed and ground down. Uh, matter of fact, I might even add a little uh, weld or two to the top side right there. I'll be using that tool right there with a sanding disc with like some 60 grit on there to knock those welds down. If you have not seen my previous video about why I added in all of these braces, I did that so that I could uh, hammer and dolly on this area here and push it down and, you know, create a little bit more curvature in here and by doing so, not draw this seam in that away and pull it in that away because I didn't want to change the body line of the car across here. So I just welded in some temporary braces I'm about to cut out and then, of course, grind down those welds as well. Uh, that's why I did that. It was ultimately about strengthening this edge so it did not move. Okay guys, I got the panel in the car. Now it's time to address this issue of the little riser piece right here that goes around uh, the windshield wiper post. All I'm going to do is set that on there, get it exactly where I want it, maybe hold it in uh, place with a couple of refrigerator magnets, trace it out with my grease marker, cut out the middle, weld it in, grind the welds down. I'm not going to show you guys all of that. It's the same process I just did here with this, only it's easier because I'm not creating anything out of thin air. Uh, I'll go ahead and skip forward now and show you the finished product. Okay, folks, that is it. All four of these things are now cut out of the cowl. And you can see that uh, everything has been walled off nice and smooth. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it's just totally done and good to go because my sheet metal work is not that good. If I were to take my contour tool here and I were to set it over here in this area and then slide it down over to here, you'll notice that the contour really isn't uh, quite right. You've got a little bit of a gap up there at the top and the bottom. And that basically tells me that I've got some hammer and dolly work to do but the meat and taters of all the fabricating is over. I can, I'm just afraid to even wonder uh, how much body filler it's going to take, you know, to make it look right. I mean, I'm hoping for a sixteenth of an inch. I'm afraid to death that it'll be a quarter. If it's an eighth or less, I will consider this a huge success, considering that I've never done this before. So uh, that was walling off the cow. Uh, let me show you what I got coming up next. Next up on the chopping block is going to involve the folks from Willwood. I have got a set of their uh, clutch and brake pedals with, of course, dual master cylinder. It is going to be 
Ooh, uh, mounted into the car right over here. And uh, anyways, I'm getting all of that mapped out for what I plan to do. Expect that surely I will be posting a video and sharing with everybody how it's going. I have been drawing up several different mounting plates and cutting them in my CNC cutter. And I think that's probably the one I'm ultimately going to graft into the firewall. Also, thank you to Caleb at Willwood for sending me this snazzy t-shirt. That's it for today, folks. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, all of that crap if you really wanna. As always, hope you're learning something from all of my many mistakes. Appreciate you guys watching and joining along for my 67 Nova build. Y'all have a great one. Take care of yourself out there.